Last time I spoke to Dirk Niepelt, the leader of the CEPR Research and Policy Network on fintech and digital currencies, he promised an ebook on the design and implications of CBDC. Well, it's here. So what does it tell us? Dirk, hello again. Welcome back. Hi, Tim. Hello. Uh, Dirk, you pointed out in the introduction to this book that when this activity looking into CBDCs started at CEPR in 2018, then they were rejected or ignored by most policymakers. Now, one thing you really notice from the book is that there are contributions from major economies all over the world. What's changed? Yeah, that's true. Well, to be fair, Tim, I guess one has to say that most of the people who wrote in the book and also the institutions being represented in the book, they were already on board like a couple of years ago. They have thought about this already. But many other places, many central banks, many monetary authorities had not in 2018 when Antonio Fatars got all this started. And what has changed really, I think, is the, that in 2019, um, Libra was on everybody's minds. Libra, which is now DM. And uh, before that, some policymakers, they thought this is sort of a side issue. There's this crypto stuff, which is sort of ridiculous. I don't want to think about that. And then there's stable coins, a bit more serious, but it's all the same. And CBDC is probably also something like this. So let's not worry too much about that. And then came DM, or Libra and, and Facebook in the background. And I think this is really what focused policymakers' minds and made them think, well, there's something going on in the private sector and we better... You know, keep up and then think about these issues and, and bring something on our own because otherwise um, these guys will, will do and it will be just on the sidelines. So I think this was really the big change in 2019. One other thing that caught my eye from the introduction is uh, you saying that uh, the implications of central bank digital currency stretches far beyond payments, monetary policy and financial stability. What other issues are being discussed about it? Well, it would, of course, still be about payments and monetary policy, what CBDC is about. But um, this would be of a much larger quantity that um, how central banks have been dealing with those issues so far. So it would just be a huge elephant in the room that would affect many other issues. One is that um, by being so large, the central bank would become, through generating senior rich, a major contributor to government revenues, there would be much more political pressure on central banks for that reason. Um, then by opening up the balance sheet for retail savers or depositors, um, the central bank might also you know, open the way for questions for more in other domains. There might be other players who would approach the central bank and ask for uh, removing the privileges that commercial banks had so far, also along other dimensions. Then there's the whole international domain. Um, some countries or some policymakers are of the view that um, because some countries do this, they should also do this, not to lose some competitive advantage in the international financial marketplace, etc., etc. So I think there's many, many political questions being asked in the context of CBDC. There's also many legal questions. And therefore, it's clearly outside of the remit of questions or answers that only central banks should be able to give. It's really a broader question. Now that economists, policymakers are thinking in detail about the implications, is the, the balance of their thinking really all about the, the risks or are there opportunities that perhaps we haven't considered before? Well, there's clearly trade-offs. So there's pluses and minuses, and that's on policymakers and academics' minds. I think what we've learned over the last couple of years, both in research but also in, 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 uh, in central bankers, when, when people think about this and run pilot projects, is that the major risks might not necessarily be those that people thought about in the first place. I mean, the major risk I think that many were concerned about is this will kill banks, this will undermine their financing, this will lead to disintermediation, maybe more runs, maybe undermine investment and growth. Um, in the ebook, a couple of chapters um, touch upon that, and there's some, I would say, consensus that this might not be the biggest risk. There's issues about privacy, which are on, um, on citizens and policymakers' minds. I think there's many questions about politics, about time consistency, um, what would all this mean for the independence of central banks? 
And on the benefit side, I think um, we knew already a couple of years ago, and we now know much better that there might be benefits in terms of fostering competition in the financial sector where competition to some extent is limited. We are not that sure whether it would foster innovation or whether it would make actually slow down innovation because this mostly comes from the private sector. We start to think about issues like uh, the market microstructure of financial markets. What is there going on in details when banks lend, finance themselves out of deposits? Is there something important going on that we might destroy by issuing CBDC? Um, yeah, there's many questions. So I wouldn't say there's something completely new, but I would think that the focus is, is shifting somewhat, going maybe from the big macro questions more to the political and the mic market microstructure questions. Talking about political questions, second half of the book is all about uh, focusing on individual currency areas. And of course, a lot of people who download this book are going to be very interested in what the contributors have to say about the prospect of a digital euro. Is this at the moment, is it politically feasible? Uh, economically, might it undermine stability in the euro area? Always a question. I think the chapter on the digital euro uh, is, is pretty much consistent with the signals that we typically get from ECB policymakers. There seems to be a, a clear message, at least you know, if you read between the lines, that this is something that the ECB would like to do within the next couple of five years or something like this. But then at the same time, they are concerned about the banking sector in Europe. And for that reason, they have proposed a couple of different instruments to make sure that this would not in any way endanger the financing of commercial banks, like imposing caps, for example, and these kind of things. And that's also the message, I think, that comes out of the chapter in the ebook. So um, we will only do it if we are sure that this will not create havoc and, and, and create major risks. That's at least how I read the chapter. Now about political risks, I don't think, I mean, my reading or my listening to the discussions about the uh, digital euro so far, I haven't seen much political controversy about that. I think the ECB has signaled, yes, we are interested and policymakers in Brussels and elsewhere, they seem to have been fine with that. There's just a few national central banks where there have been rather skeptical voices, but that was mostly for, again, macroeconomic reasons, I guess. So there were some fears that this might endanger banks or questions whether this is necessary at all. I haven't seen much of a political you know, dispute about that, but this might well come at some point. Once the thing becomes more concrete, we might very well see some national banks also starting to wonder whether an even more strong and important European Central Bank would actually amplify some of the political conflicts that play out through monetary policy in these days. So I think it will be there at some point, but not that much at this point is my reading. Uh, by contrast, I note that the chapters about the possible introduction of central bank digital currency in the US, they're very skeptical about the idea. Why? Yeah, there's three chapters in the ebook on the US case. Uh, two of them, I would say, are on the skeptical side. Uh, one is more on the positive side. Um, on the skeptical side, I think the argument is, I mean, we don't know exactly what will happen. There are some risks. Uh, so do we really need it? And the answer to the question, do we really need it? There are two of the three writers say, well, maybe not, right? I mean, number one, we still have lots of cash being used in the US. So there's no urgency on that front. Number two, do we really trust the government doing a better job than uh, private companies, private institutions? And the, the typical U.S. approach there is to say, no, not really. Uh, so in terms of innovation, it's really the private sector that delivers and not the government. And in terms of lack of competition, I think there's hope, at least uh, amongst two of the three writers, that um, uh, there's problems, they would agree, but uh, we have started to get uh, solutions for those problems already now and we probably don't need cbdc that's how two would see it i think the the third writer who is much more positive he would argue these problems are major in particular when it comes to lack of competition in the u.s sector and and really sort of an old-fashioned and fractured um, um, payment system and also regulatory system and cbdc could be a a catalyst to get those things uh, started to to get improvement on that front 
And even if in the end we don't really implement it, this third writer, I think, would argue that it would be useful to get it started and to have a blueprint and a, a prototype running and then still later on decide whether we really want to do it or at least get things moving along the road. You also asked a, a group of economists as, who were involved in the network, involved with this subject, a series of questions about the likely impact of the introduction of central bank digital currency. I won't give away the questions or their answers, but... Uh, if they were introduced, is there a consensus among economists about what those impacts would be at the moment? So, so Tim, I mean, when you ask two economists, typically you get three answers. At least that's what people claim, that uh, economists really can get their head around something and agree on something. And given that, I think uh, the respondents were, were quite clear and there was some sort of agreement, at least. I think people were very clearly of the opinion that if such a CBDC were to be issued, it would have basically the form of what deposits look like today from the user's perspective. So we would do basically the same thing as what we do today when we use bank deposits for payments. Um, they also were pretty clear, and that's also what central banks actually are saying, that it would not be something like cryptocurrency, you know, some complicated um, blockchain architecture running somewhere, and we would make payments through that. No, it would be probably a centralized system. Um, there was less disagreement regarding whether this thing would pay interest, which is a, a major question in the context of retail CBDC. So would, be, would this be like deposits paying interest or would it be like a, a claim that does not pay interest? There's also not that much consensus about the privacy features of that thing. Would it be like cash that you basically can do anonymous payments? And most people would probably say no, but would it have sort of a mixture of different privacy aspects? I think there's disagreement. There's also some disagreement regarding how important it is to maintain trust in the central bank, which is an important question. If cash is on the way out, at least slowly in many countries, then you wonder whether central banks will have to introduce CBDC to keep some connection between end users and the central bank in order to also foster and maintain trust. And there's a bit of different views on that one as well. So yeah, some consensus, but certainly not a complete consensus. Well, it's a very interesting ebook. It's a, sort of a document of policy as it evolves, history as it's being made on this. And uh, Dirk, thank you very much for all the work it must have been in putting it together. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. As ever, the book's a free download. It's called Central Bank Digital Currency Considerations Project Outlook. And you can use this link to download it. The editor, of course, is Dirk Niepelt. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.